All right, so we've talked a little bit about the um, capacitors themselves, and now we're going to talk about how they store energy and work through some of the calculations that go along with that. And so the capacitors store energy in the field between the plates. So what happens is you hook up the battery, the it charges up the plates, the field is built up, and the energy is stored in between the plates. Now when you disconnect the battery, that energy is still there, which is why you don't want to handle capacitors after they've been unplugged until they've been discharged. The potential energy of the capacitors is a capital U with a subscript of C, like capacitor energy. The equations are right down there. It's related to charge and voltage and capacitance, and I'll show you how we get to that. And the work done to charge the capacitor from zero to a full charge is equal to that electrostatic potential energy. Just so you know, it's kind of like pushing the rock up a hill or um, anything else that has to do with potential, how much work it takes to charge it is equal to the potential stored there. And so now that we talked a little bit about the um, potential energy, we'll talk a little bit about the, um, electro, the electrostatic potential energy per volume or the uh, energy density. And sadly, to confuse things, we have a little u instead of a capital U. U sub b, and it is uh, dependent on the magnitude of the electric field. And it comes out of Maxwell's equations. And so I'll, I'll show you how it's related to the potential energy, but we're not going to dig too much into Maxwell's equations until we get into light. All right, so we're going to talk about um, where the idea of energy stored in a parallel plate capacitor comes from, and then how to get to the equations to find it. And then there's different equations depending on what uh, information you have but that is because of the interrelationship between capacitance, charge, and voltage. So you'll see some of that as we work through it. So we're going to start off with the idea that um, the energy density of a capacitor is the electro electrostatic potential energy divided by the volume between the plates. And it's also equal to one-half epsilon naught times the magnitude of the electric field, and that comes from Maxwell's equations, which Sadly, we cover later, so just go with it for now. Uh, so we're going to rearrange this a little bit, and we get this, where the um, potential energy is equal to the uh, energy density times the area times the distance between the plates. And we just start plugging things in. And if you remember, the volts equals ed equation, that'll come in handy right here. So we have epsilon naught And then, and then the equation for capacitance you can kind of see it in this so this D gets one of those and we end up with one half V squared so the potential difference squared times the capacitance is going to be the uh, potential energy stored in the capacitor. And if you remember, you've got this where capacitance is charged divided by voltage. And so just rearranging this, you get the other varieties. So you're going to end up with these three different equations. Use them depending on what information you have. 
So now I um, want to talk to you a little bit about um, actually calculating the energy stored in a capacitor network or a circuit. And it's not going to depend on how the circuit's built, which is really different. We're used to talking about series and parallel circuits and changing the capacitance is what we talked about before. And it also changes how the resistors interact. Well, it just doesn't matter for energy. You're going to end up summing up all the energy stored in each individual capacitor. All right, so we're going to do some calculations with a capacitor network. And that's the same thing as a capacitor circuit. You'll kind of see them interchanged. But um, first thing we're going to do is find the net capacitance, which is the total capacitance of our network here. And if you remember, you're going to start off and just start uh, combining things. And we're going to start by finding out what the equivalent capacitance capacitance is for C2 and C3 and those are in parallel so we're going to add them and we're going to end up with six microfarads for the, the um, equivalent for two and three and then we want to find the total and so since two and three are in series with one, we have to do the um, fraction adding here. So so we're going to end up with three microfarads as the total capacitance. So now if we want to find um, the charge and voltage in each capacitor, we have the situation, and I'll just remind you that the total capacitance was 3 microfarads. Um, and the capacitors in series have the same charge. So the charge in capacitor 1 is going to equal the charge in capacitor 2, 3 equivalent. And so we're going to get 12 volts is V1 plus V2, 3. This is Q1 over C1 plus Q2, 3 over C23. That's just the relationship between voltage, charge, and capacitance. And since Q1 and Q23 are equal, we get Q1 over C1 is equal to Q1 over C23. I'm sorry, plus which is C1, back on track, sorry about that. And so we'll, we'll plug in and we get Q1 over six plus Q1 over six. So Q1 ends up being 36 microcoulombs when you do the math. And V1 is going to be Q1 over C1, which is going to end up being 6 volts. And so to find um, the voltage and charge, in 2 and 3, we know from the parallel circuit that V2 is going to be equal to V3. Which is going to be the 12 volts that we started with with the battery minus the 6 volt drop from the first capacitor. And so there's going to be 6 volts in each one of those capacitors. 
So the charge in Q2 is just the capacitance times the voltage. Same for the other. And so we have um, Q1 was equal to 36 microcoulombs, Q2 was 12 microcoulombs, and Q3 is 24 microcoulombs. All right, so now we need to find the energy stored in each capacitor. And so um, we're going to start off with the voltage in the first capacitor is 6 volts. And just because of the way the numbers worked out, everything is 6 volts in this one, sadly. But it doesn't always work that way. And so U1 is 1 half C1 V1 squared, because that's the information we have, which is 6 microfarads times 6 volts squared divided by 2. And energy is in joules, so these are microjoules, because we started off with microfarads. And then U2, same equation. I think you get the idea here. And then if you want the total, you add them up. Oops, microjoules. 216 microjoules. So capacitors aren't always just filled with a vacuum or filled with air. Sometimes you put insulating material in between it you could put Teflon, um, different kinds of glass are very common, especially when you're, you're talking about um, the semiconductors. There's lots of different kinds of glass that they put in between the layers of metal. And, and the idea is it's going to change that capacitance. So it gives you a way to control the capacitance. Depending on what the material is made out of, it, it drops the potential difference between the plates. And how that works is when the field builds up, in the dielectric material, it causes the plates to, to polarize the molecules. So all the little molecules are polarized, and it can carry a little bit of a current. And so um, dielectric constant is uh, K, and it's due to the dielectric material. And it's one in a vacuum. It's very, very close to one in air, so we'll consider those very similar for our purposes. And then it's greater than one for other materials. And there is a chart for you in 8.5 if you need to look it up to solve the problems. But uh, on the test, you'll be given the um, dielectric constants if it matters. So don't bother memorizing any of those unless you want to put some interesting information in your brain for your next party. So here are some of the equations for uh, capacitance. And it's just simply the original capacitance times that dielectric constant. If you want to look at the energy, you can, you can go through the equation and find out how this is related. It goes right back to the original equation from this, this little um, set of notes that the energy stored is 1 over the constant times the original energy. And the dielectric constant is just the ratio of the original energy stored to the energy storing with the dielectric there. So those C naughts and U naughts just represent what could be there if it was a vacuum. All right, so here's an example of finding the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. Um, it's going to be filled with air 
and you'll notice that the dielectric constant for air is 1.00059. The dielectric constant for a vacuum is just one. So you can pretty much call air in a vacuum close enough for calculations for what we're working on that they're equivalent. And so this is like the initial capacitance without the dielectric. And so our calculation is going to be pretty straightforward. Um, the capacitance is epsilon naught area over distance. Where it does get tricky is you'll notice the units in here. We've got centimeters squared and millimeters, so we have to watch out for that. And so this is epsilon naught, which is 9 times 10 to the minus 12 coulomb squared newton meters squared times the area, which is 8 centimeters squared and we are going to fix this conversion real fast one meter over 100 centimeters and that's got to be squared uh, divided by 0 0.001 meter since I can do that one in my head and if you if you do the math that you find out that um, this is going to be 7.2 times 10 to the minus 12 farads or 7.2 picofarads which is a common value for capacitors is pico and so this is good for air or really vacuum and now what we're going to do is we're going to insert a dielectric with a constant of 6. And what's the new capacitance? And so our new capacitance is going to be the dielectric constant times the capacitance without the dielectric. Nice straightforward math. So we end up with a 42 picofarad uh, capacitor. Alright, good luck. Bye-bye.